How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. This time around I wanted to take the time to address incorrect information and how that can relate to care for your animal, especially newts and salamanders. And if you enjoy the video, please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below, please subscribe. Your support is always very much appreciated. And don't forget to check out the description for links to the Salamander Wilds Facebook page, Instagram, and Discord. I wanted to start off with this example here. Why won't my red-eared slider turtle eat? Now, obviously not a salamander, but the idea here is pretty simple. If you are going to be doing any sort of article or information on a red-eared slider, why not just use a photo for your thumbnail that's actually a red-eared slider instead of the tortoise shown here? They are two completely different animals. And the reason why the tortoise might not eat could very well be different from the reason why the red-eared slider might not be eating. So I think it's pretty important to use a photo or a thumbnail that accurately represents the information that you're providing. And I think this especially matters to beginners and newcomers in a hobby, because if they run into some sort of issue, it could be confusing or even overwhelming if they can't find the correct information. So I think accurately representing that is pretty important. I think an equivalent example here would be if I were to put out a care guide on a specific species of salamander or newt, I wouldn't use a photo or thumbnail that doesn't represent the species that I am actually talking about. And so that brings me to my next example here. And while not directly related in terms of subject matter, this is another example of incorrect information that has been published. And in this case, this is information that is found in an animal and nature pamphlet at a county park. And this pamphlet here is obviously available to anyone that wants to pick it up and give it a read. And yes, I did do a little bit of editing just to block out the location so I don't reveal where these animals live. But if you take a look at the front of this pamphlet, it says that the information in here was gathered during a BioBlitz event. Now, this BioBlitz event basically allows nature lovers and visitors to encounter the native animals in the area, while also allowing the scientists to create a record of the species diversity. And so, going back to the inside page of this pamphlet, there is information about the Eastern Newt, and it reads as follows. The juveniles, orange with dark spots, are often found after rain showers, which is absolutely true, but I've highlighted the next bit of information, which is where the problem comes in. Now, the next bit goes on to say that adults are generally olive or red. Now, I have never seen an adult Eastern Newt still with its red coloration. Every single adult Eastern Newt that I have ever seen or have ever kept all have the olive green coloration with red spots. And then it goes on to say where they can live in water implies that it's an optional lifestyle. And the problem here is that while yes, adults can go onto land, this generally happens if the aquatic habitat that they're living in may have some sort of water quality issue or some other problem going on. And then perhaps the biggest issue here is that it goes on to say they grow gills into adulthood. And that is just flat out wrong because the adults have lungs and they go up to the surface of the water for air. They have to hold their breath. They can't breathe underwater as adults. Now, me being me, I did write an email to the county about this incorrect information in maybe some futile hope that they would actually acknowledge that and do some sort of correction at some point, but that hasn't happened. So I thought it would be good to set the record straight here because while I am definitely not claiming to be an expert myself, I think it is pretty unfortunate that information like this can go through scientists and possible so-called experts for this information to still be so inaccurate. 
So I definitely had quite a bit to say about this, and if you want to call it a rant, that's possible too, that's fine. Um, I do think it's absolutely critical to put the best and accurate information out there as possible, especially for those who are newcomers or beginners to a hobby such as this, especially animals that a lot of people just don't know enough about. And even if you're not getting into the hobby, if you don't know what these animals are and this is the first thing that you see, it's just incorrect information being fed to you. And I think that's just really unfortunate. And that's part of what my channel aims to provide is accurate information to show a better appreciation and understanding of these animals. So what do you all think? Am I just being very nitpicky here? Uh, I really don't think so, but you know, leave a comment, tell me what you think. Um, I think just for the sake of what I do, putting out the best information possible is pretty important. So if you all enjoyed the video, please remember to leave a like, share, and again, comment down below. And of course, please subscribe. Your support is always very much appreciated. And until next time, I hope you'll all join me for another adventure into the Salamander Wilds.